This is a late 1960s RCA. It's probably a CTC 35. We'll pop the back off. Take a look. Automatic fine tuning. New Vista color. This came from Ridgecrest, California. Ridgecrest is fairly famous right now because of the recent earthquakes out there that rattled a good part of California. And this TV is in very good shape. Now when I picked it up, I actually paid for it. It was on Facebook Marketplace. I picked it up, uh, or I paid for it several months ago and they held it for me because I was the only one who was interested in it as a television. They had lots of people contact them that wanted to repurpose it and that's huge out here. Fish tanks, wet bars, uh, bird cages, dog beds, you name it. That's what happens to most of these out here in the West. It's I could sell I could flip this probably right now and have someone here to buy it in a couple hours for repurposing. Problem with the repurposing thing is all the all the television collectors like to bitch about it, but none, none of them ever want to step up and save the set. So this is uh, just a quick initial look at it. This is almost a, looks like it's a nine out of ten. Now Ridgecrest of course is out in the desert and it's very dry out there. The humidity is very low. GL630W. So with the low humidity certain aspects of the set will survive a lot better uh, than in a humid tropical climate like I'm in here in LA. So let's pop the back off. It doesn't look virgin. It looks kind of minty, but it doesn't look virgin. Um, the clips, the chassis clips are missing. Ben Y.S. Lee, China Lake, California. China Lake is the military base right next to Ridgecrest. Got r hit really hard in the earthquake. There's one bolt missing here, one chassis bolt. This is looking at the bottom. They put that on the bottom. It's got that desert dust in it. And this is a CTC 38. So it's a kind of a hybrid. Uh, is that the soundy mod down there? To the left next to the filters is that soundy modulation? Or what is that, AFC? Looks like some of the IF is uh, solid state. It has the original picture bulb so that would suggest that it's very low hour lots of 6GH8s RCA really loved 6GH8s and most of them look like original tubes. Let me check. That tube right there actually looks like it says Toshiba on it. So it has had it has had some work on it. Now the, the young people that were selling it that had just taken over this house from the state, they plugged it in and turned it on and it came up with a static raster, a nice bright raster and static. So I think this is just going to be kind of a show and tell video. 
but this thing is in really good shape maybe in maybe an 8 out of 10 or an 8.5 there are some scuffs in the cabinet but it's all there it actually looks like maybe some work has been done in here a little bit of wax drippage I think the flyback would tend to fare a little bit better in low humidity If anyone happens to be looking for or is willing to to adopt a set like this, this is going to be replacing probably a CTC 35 that I have just because this is a little bit smaller. It's more of a compact, um, kind of almost a consolette, but yeah, I like the look of this one. So if anyone's looking to adopt one of the ones that this is going to be replacing let me know or else off to the fish tank land the reason why this set has the original CRT and no cataract is because of the dry environment you know it's going to start it's going to start delaminating now that it's in uh, LA yeah, set in a dry environment, they don't get cataract. If you're if you're in Tennessee or Florida or something where the humidity is 90% all the time, the cataracts are real bad. But out in the desert, it will never appear. Okay, this is the cutoff. Somebody asked me what cutoff was. It's applying a negative voltage to the grid, which in turn kind of shrinks the beam down. Uh, and test the consistency of the um, emitting material on the cathode. I know that probably doesn't uh, make a lot of sense, but there was a video floating around that explained it. If I can find that video, I will provide a link to it in the description below. So look at how strong this is. So let me set the cut off. And so, let me make sure, you got to get it, you got to get it right on the uh, little line there. Let's see. So that's the CRT strength. It's like brand new. This is a low hour set. It's a really low hour set and it's too bad I'm in this damp environment where it's going to start getting cataracts. It's, you know. Like I mentioned previously, this this here is a CTC 35. And it's, uh, you can see the cabinet's a little bit bigger. It's got speakers on both sides. So if somebody wants to adopt a working CTC, RCA CTC 35 color console, let me know. Los Angeles area. When I get time, I'm going to dig it out of here, and if somebody doesn't want it, well, maybe it can become a humidor or a wet bar. We have our digital stream converter box and our rabbit ears. Because, you know, color rabbit ears are different from black and white rabbit ears, and those rabbit ears are different from digital rabbit ears so you have to make sure you have the right antenna okay I'm being sarcastic here we go nice I 
like I say, they had it turned on. Danger. Manufacturers of talc, including Johnson & Johnson, the makers of baby powder, have been accused of having done nothing to educate consumers or even to include a warning on their products about a potential link. Studies show that women who use talc-containing products as part of their feminine hygiene every day have a 30 to 60 percent higher risk of developing ovarian cancer than those who don't use the product. Now, the risk of mesothelioma from asbestos exposure for men and women adds to this problem. So if you or a loved one has been diagnosed with ovarian cancer or mesothelioma after regular use of talcum powder, I strongly urge that you call the number on your screen now to get more information about what can be done to protect you and your rights. So Wendy, do the researchers say is the cause of these devastating side effects? The reason for the ovarian cancer risk is that talc particles actually migrate to the ovaries. And since the particles are slow to break down, they can remain intact in the ovaries for years. In the ovaries, these foreign particles create an inflammatory response, and this creates conditions which increase the likelihood of cancer growth. With mesothelioma, testing reveals asbestos fibers can actually be inhaled into the lungs from exposure to talcum powder, and this can cause a rare and deadly form of lung cancer. With all this disturbing information, have there been lawsuits filed against the manufacturers? Oh, there certainly have. Wait till you hear this. As a result of these findings, over 6,600 lawsuits have been filed against Johnson & Johnson and Colgate Palmolive. These are prominent manufacturers of talcum powder products. And they accuse the companies of failing to warn consumers of the possible link between ovarian cancer. Okay, this is a, a really erotic subject to be, yeah. I love my... So where is contrast? I can't believe it just turned on and worked. What's this? This has got to be vertical. Oh, here's... Boy, these pots are touchy. These pots are dirty. But yeah, here's... It's just the pots are dirty. The vertical looks, when you can see the lines like that, that's not quite right. I wonder if they crank the vertical way up to try and uh, correct for a widescreen. A lot of people do that. A lot of people don't understand that you got these with 16 by 9, you have these bars on top and bottom. But yeah, those those lines, that's not, that's not right. Shouldn't look like that. It's just these controls are all dirty. They're probably all dusty inside. If you or someone you love has been harmed due to the use of talcum powder products, you need to call the number on the screen right now as you may be entitled to significant compensation for your injuries. Have you or a loved one been diagnosed with ovarian cancer? Okay, what happened here? Johnson and Johnson baby. Full refund of the purchase price, no question. I adjusted the AGC. The Order now, and you could double the offer. Just the AGC was right. way low, so I adjusted it, and it got rid of all that weird vertical stuff. Uh, and it, the contrast got a lot better. Trusted butcher recipe book filled with mouth-watering recipes inspired by Smashburger, Chick-fil-A, and Outback Steakhouse. Look at those RCA greens. Fun slicing hacks like how to slice a dozen tomatoes in a second and how to quickly slice a Hasselback potato. Look, this professional chef knife costs $350, but you won't even pay $100. All this is a $500 value, all yours today for only three payments of $24.99. This is an exclusive TV offer not available in stores, so don't miss out. Go to TrustedButcherKnives.com to get in on this amazing offer. To order, call 1-800-420-2060 or go to TrustedButcherKnives.com. This is not available in any store, so call now. All right, guys, so next, this blade is so strong and so sharp, it can even run right across a metal grill. So slice through this one, slice through that one, and look, mm, guys. Look at that. This is the perfect knife. No, but wait real quick. Let me just take the same knife that just went across this grill from the steak 
to the tomato. Look at this. Watch this. The same knife. One-handed, mind One you. One-handed. <laughs> um, just, you know. Look at that. Right? Wow. Let's see how thin it actually is. You can still read the paper. <laughs> Superfood contains an amazing blend of fruits and vegetables that are 100% grown in America, USDA certified organic, farm to table fresh in every scoop. Just one scoop of grown American superfood is the fast, easy, delicious way to double your servings of fruits and vegetables every day to help improve your chances of better health and a longer life. Only grown American superfood has a full one and a half servings of healthy, life-giving fruits and vegetables from a unique blend of over 30 certified organic superfoods packed into every Applelicious scoop. No more wasting time and money to shop. No buzz in the audio. Let's get back here and get the money shot. Just works. Glowage. Got that little bit of blue glow going on in the horizontal output tube. Should probably check the cathode current on that guy before I run it too too long. But uh, yeah, that's a look at a. This might be, I don't know, CTC 38. This might be 69 or 70. I'd have to pull a schematic on it. But it's definitely got no added sugar, no fillers, no flavor, and a nice bright green picture. Look at that. You cannot beat RCA Color Demod for these old sets. RCA really had it down. Check this out. CTC 38 is in Sam's folder 1000, 1968. So it's like a 6869. Looks like it's got solid state IF, transistor IF, and some of the sound. The sound IF is solid state. 